or whatever, and then it was swi swinging like this. So all three were swimming, sw swinging in a different speed, and then at one point, all three pipes aligned in one direction, direction and then you can see clearly through you know, the other side of the pipe. It was something like that, like, uh, you know, wow, you know, like, uh, um, this is my destiny. You know, strange way, it sounds like kind of corny, but uh, that's how I felt in, in this space. And uh, I don't know, it's funny that uh, I, instead of seeking for different jobs, a lot of a lot of my friends, like very talented people, from the school they moved to New York, and and then they gave up making art. Uh, they they found different different jobs, and uh, um, so it, for me, still it's a mystery when when that um, uh, experience happened when I was having a very difficult time. So that's something that I wanted to tell you before we get into the other okay. topic. Yeah. yeah. And is that more often that you, at one moment, while you're not sleeping, you see an image or images come together that makes you to know what you have to do, or was it just once that it happened? Yeah, so it's just clearly? One, yeah, it's just one, 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 once happened and. Uh, I don't know, this is totally coincidence, but there's another incident that um, that I, uh, it was during when I was making a piece for the public art fund. Mm -hmm. I told you uh, around 2000, sorry, I told you the, the that I got the grant from Public Art Fund and I had to make a piece. And um, so it was 1998, mm -hmm. something like that, uh, or 1999. Uh, and I was making piece uh, uh, at the, my studio on the 26th Street. And uh, obviously the, the, the the money that I got from the public art fund was not enough to make the piece that I that I wanted. So it was really difficult to managing to manage the um, uh, project financially. And and at that time, I had a skin like a rashes all over my. Uh, you know, legs and skin because of the material that I was using. So I saw it was an allergy. So it was not just me, my assistant had that allergy from this, um, uh, the rubber for the mold. Mm -hmm. I was casting something and uh, it's a polyurethane. Um, and it was so itchy, I couldn't, I mean, it's horrible. Horrible, horrible. And then it was summer and, uh, you know, you see this rashes all over. So I was just dragging myself from here to the studio one Sunday morning. And uh, somewhere in between uh, 9th and 10th Avenue on the 23rd Street, it was south side of the 23rd Street, there was a homeless guy sitting on the pavement and I was just passing by and then he looked at me and said everything will be all right and I wasn't quite sure he was talking to himself mm -hmm. or to, to me but I felt he was talking to me and then he repeated don't worry like everything would be fine and that was a, such a strange experience because uh, it, it just it just felt that he was reading my mind or something or understood uh, uh, this sort of situation that I was 
in, and I wasn't sure whether I could complete the project. Uh, you know, I was just so tired, and the deadline was approaching, and uh, the neighbors, uh, my the neighbors f near the studio, were complaining about the noise that I was making at the studio. You know, it's just a lot of things were not working for my favor, you know, at that time. But uh, uh, that really helped me, that incident really helped me go through. And it just happened in a very strange time, you know. So that's like uh, one of the strange experiences that I had while I was living in this place, you know, yeah, so. Mm. So back to Rebecca. Yeah, so. Uh, Maybe you can tell yourself that Rebecca was, that there was a, another student who fell in love with your work. That'd be maybe good to start from there. Yeah, so uh, we went to the same school. Uh, she studied musicology. She was at the uh, uh, music school uh, at Yale, but we didn't know each other. But her uh, closest friend at school um, was an architecture student, and uh, um, uh, art and architecture share the same building. So she saw my work uh, there before before she met me. Um, and, uh, and Can you the, remember what it was, the work? What was the, the work was, um, it was a wallpaper uh, made out of tiny little faces. Um, and I made that piece when I was, when I was a student there, and I think she probably saw my um, thesis exhibition. Um, so I covered the, um, the gallery space with my wallpaper and then my wallpaper from the distance, it looks like kind of monochromatic pattern, but um, when you get closer, you can actually start to see the little faces. So the faces is like this big. And, uh, and then after I graduated, and for my first solo show in New York, I made a smaller, you know, version of that piece, and then that's the piece that Rebecca bought uh, from that my first show. But uh, her friend, the architect friend, uh, they both moved to uh, New York um, after the school, and then they actually were lo they were roommates, and um, that friend architect friend um, worked at the same form my younger brother worked. Um, so, um, so probably my younger brother told them that my, you know, his, his brother is having an exhibition in New York. So they all came and uh, both of them bought my work, you know, so one pink and one green, and uh, um, and then Rebecca lived in New York for a few years and then moved back to London. And she came to my exhibition and also made an effort to come to New York when my show is in was in New York. Um, so maybe. We're in a touch once in a while, but uh, but the um, probably 2000 end of 2007 um, uh, before I moved to Berlin, I saw her in New York. Uh, she visited New York, and then, um, and then, um, in 2008, I was in a 
Groovix.